So, my name is Miriam Mamari and I'm a PhD student at Linköping University and um, I'll be here to talk about one of my studies and it's an ongoing study, so it's not quite finished yet. Uh, and it's a part of my doctoral compilation thesis that I'm writing and the working title is Constructing a Group Politically and Socially, the Case of Needs. And my focus is on political and social construction of needs. Uh, and my compilation thesis will consist of four different articles or studies, plus so several summarizing chapters. And the ongoing study will be like the first of uh, my first article. And uh, it, con it focuses on how academics socially construct an group in different peer-reviewed articles. Um, so and that's what I'm going to present to you today. Um, I have some uh, information about the material. I've uh, gone through a, over 150 peer-reviewed articles. Uh, and they're all written about acronym NEAT. And they're published between 2008 and 2015. Actually, until April 2016, to be correct, mm -hmm. I think I, uh, I, I, wrote, I miswrote 2015 there. Uh, and you all know that NEAT stands for Not in Education, Employment and Training, and they refer to a young age group. In Sweden, as well as in the UK, uh, the age is between 16 and 24, but it's different. It varies a bit from country to country. Uh, in, for example, Japan, the age group is uh, considerably higher in the, in, the, uh, in, in the higher end of the spectrum, so to say. But in any case, so uh, it still needs. And it was first coined in the UK, and it was developed during the late 1980s, but firmly established as the only acceptable acronym to be used in the UK in 1999. And when I say academia, I'm specifically referring to the body of scientific community expressed through the medium of articles published in peer-reviewed journals. So when I say, what does academia have to say about needs? I'm only talking about peer-reviewed uh, articles because uh, I haven't had uh, the, the possibility to go through everything written about needs, obviously. Uh, my main research question is how is need can socially constructed as a group and associated to social problems? Uh, so my focus lies on how needs are defined, described and referenced to social problems in the selected material. And uh, I am, uh, I have a master's in political science, uh, but I am doing my PhD within social work at the Department of Social and Welfare Studies. So the, the association to social problems becomes quite important for my discipline. So that's why uh, one of the main uh, focuses is on that particularly. I have a theoretical framework. I'm not going to tire you with uh, long and tedious discussion on theories, but I just want to shortly say that uh, I have uh, theoretical discussions on discourse and social constructionist perspectives included in my study, and also theories specifically focusing on social problems through a social constructionist uh, view. Um, now, why is it important to care about um, the social construction of needs? Uh, I have uh, a, an article written by Andy Furlong, and he criticizes uh, the need concept to be both too wide and too narrow at the same time. Uh, and his focus is on, well, he presumes that that the need concept is, so to say, a way to identify a group of young people who are mar mar marginalized uh, or uh, troubled or in need of different benefits of social provisions. Uh, and in, with that assumption, uh, he thinks that the need as a category is too wide and too narrow at the same time. And what does he mean by that? Well, uh, he elaborates that you will also find within the NEAT group some young people who 
are on a sabbatical, who are taking time to explore a hobby, who are traveling, who are uh, living at home with mom and dad, and uh, maybe not um, in any particular marginalized position, but perhaps developing the new next big app uh, or, or doing other things that are productive. So it doesn't only include young people who are in some sort of trouble. Uh, and also, um, need is too wide in a sense, or too narrow in the sense that uh, some young people who are in precarious job situations, who are jumping from one job to another, are uh, perhaps not included uh, when, when the statistics are formed, uh, that they are then uh, currently at the job, but in the risk of losing it tomorrow. So uh, in that sense, uh, he thinks that the need category isn't adequate. So uh, with all of that in mind, uh, I think that it is important uh, to know something about the purposes and assumptions and associations going on to a specific group and how it links to certain ideas and notions and preconceptions. Um, so that is uh, why I think that it is important to know how we are talking about needs and uh, what kind of uh, preconceptions do we have about the acronym um, when we're studying it, when we're studying a group of people, because they are indeed individuals packed into these uh, acronyms. Um, my data selection process, I was using two different databases, Scopus and Web of Science. My delimitations was made in a time frame, January 2008 to April 2016. Uh, one of my delimitations was also that the articles had to mainly focus on needs, so it couldn't be just a side interest or a side thing, so it had to be just about needs or mainly about needs. And I also made some additional searches to complete the material in form of a multi-database platform and some reference searches. And my first entry, uh, my first result, uh, searches resulted in 16,000 entries, which was way too much <laughs> to be studying. Um, but so I, I, I scaled it down uh, to 151 articles, which are all highly relevant to my research question. And I've been doing um, two uh, different types of analysis. Uh, one is uh, both through a discourse analysis, uh, and also then another is a hybrid qualitative content analysis with focus on keyword and context analysis, KWIC, as well as category labeling. Uh, the discourse analysis rests on three different themes or sub-questions, and I'm going to present them uh, to analyze the patterns of associations going on. And then the KWIC consists of keywords from abstracts to provide a list with categories very labeled words, and I will also do a chain of equivalence analysis, and I'm going to show this in just in a second. Now, what do I mean with the keywords? Well, they're taken from abstracts from different um, from the different peer-reviewed journals, and for example, here, this is uh, an article written by Anna Maria Artner, and her keywords is here. Crisis, labor market, needs, unemployment, youth unemployment, and basic income. So those are the words I were analyzing as part of this part of my KWIC analysis. Uh, and what I did with those kinds of keywords is that I made category labeled keywords. I could then, uh, through looking at uh, the different words, uh, you could see that some were more related to each other than others. So, for example, you could make a section just on crime, drugs, and addiction, and you'd have these kind of keywords, addiction, drugs, alcohol, cannabis use, etc. And then uh, the same went for include, exclude, participate, uh, where you had marginalization, stigmatization, disengagement, and individual self-identity. So self-esteem, self-perceptions, self-confidence, and so on. So I, I did this, and this is just three examples. There are many more uh, categories like this. 
and then I also made a chain of equivalence analysis uh, where I have the examples of keywords here written down to a code. So, and this is quite interesting because these are keywords that are specifically describing or, or explaining NEAT uh, very much to the core of who is NEAT and why. And then you have uh, these codes like, well, they're associated to be criminals or addicts, <coughs> victims, margin, marginalized, um, sick, health, passive, active. The, these are the codes that I could derive from the entire uh, keyword material. Um, and also, apart from the, the keyword analysis, I also made a discourse analysis where I had to narrow it down to a focus material. And I am using a randomized sampling to narrow it down to this focus material. The 151 articles were, as I said, all relevant. So I couldn't narrow it down any further uh, to make this quantitative uh, analysis. So what I had to do is that I selected a simple randomized selection using the lottery method to make it that each of these 150 articles had an equal chance of being chosen to my in-depth reading. Uh, so the in-depth reading of the focus material will allow, uh, will follow, sorry, a guide consisting of themes and sub-questions, and they're all connected to my research question, and that's to be presented here. Uh, I have three different themes. One is problem claims, the other is description, and the third would be purpose. And so uh, claims made of specifi specified problems linked to needs is what I uh, put into the problem claim category and so what are the problems and problem for whom exactly uh, is it a problem for society or is it a problem for the individual youth uh, or both uh, and how is the problem described and how are needs or society claim to be experiencing these problems and uh, where does the problem uh, the talk of problems where does it come in the articles is it in the beginning of the article is it in the end of the article as some sort of finding, or is it uh, just done throughout the article? And I think that's important because if we have a lot of descriptions of problems right in the beginning of the article, it's a little bit to say that it can be taken for granted. Like, this is how it is. These are the facts. And um, not, I've been exploring this with an open mind, and I've come to the conclusion that there are a lot of problems that are being made. So it's, it, it's different approaches to the whole needs concept. And then I've done just uh, the descriptions of need, how they describe, with what words exactly. And then uh, the stated purpose, uh, the articles, um, the, the authors themselves, uh, what do they state as the motivation to do the studies that they're doing, and why is it important to, do, to conduct this specific type of research. Um, and so, as I'm not quite finished with the study yet, I'm still uh, analyzing data. Uh, I have some very preliminary findings to share with you today. Uh, and I find that needs are indeed very strongly associated to, to different social problems and health issues. Uh, and both the keyword analysis uh, as well as the discourse analysis uh, uh, reinstates that. And then I have that, that many of the associations are evident already in the introduction of articles and presented in a way that is sort of taken for granted, factual way. This is how it is. This is reality and that kind of um, framing. And these kind of critical reflexive standpoints on this acronym need is, uh, I would say, definitely relatively rare in the samples that I have. Um, I was referring to Andy Furlong before, he, uh, that particular article is not in the material because it was written in 2006, so it falls out of my, my whole collection of articles, but in, it is uh, still quite uh, interesting that of 151 articles, there are really few examples of a critical reflexive standpoint on the acronym. Um, I'm adding some conference bonuses because when you work with your material you get to know a lot of things about your material that you're not presenting in your article or not presenting in your study for different reasons and I thought I would share that with you. Uh, I can tell you that NEAT is of global concern. Uh, Europe is dominating the research and UK definitely on top of that list. 
uh, but they are ac accommodated by many countries in, in Asia, predominantly Japan, but also Australia, and New Zealand, and the United States, and Mexico. Also, academia is definitely showing a growing interest in needs. It is something, publications are increasing steadily over time, it's very rapidly. Uh, very steep curves on that. And the most popular disciplines are social sciences, with education and youth studies as two different pr primary subjects within that. But it's also an interest in disciplines such as medicine and health, psychology, sociology, economics, and arts and humanities. Also, I can tell you that articles can be sorted roughly into the, the following types. We have some sort of studies or articles that are more evaluating on different programs or policies or methods that are targeting needs. We have quite a lot of those. And then we have the eth ethnographic uh, approach, which mostly focuses on the relationship between uh, different kinds of staff working with needs and the individual needs that are included in various programs or, or uh, uh, ways of working with them. And then you have the macro-analytical, uh, which focuses on social policy and social policies on a more aggregated level. And you have statistical, demographic, longitudinal studies. There is, for example, a study done on Swiss men who are neat, uh, and so on. And then there's the medical health-oriented uh, articles. I have quite a lot of medical uh, articles that focuses, for example, on food choices and neat, and food poverty and neat. Uh, and also have the educational, professional, career-oriented career articles as well. So um, I'm welcoming any kind of comments or discussions from you on my topic. And uh, as it's an ongoing study, I can uh, bring a lot of those comments with me in completing my study, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you.